There are cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes, good tomatoes and rotten tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes are perfect for your favorite salsa or as a manifestation of self-expression because tomatoes are also the weaponization of criticism. And in the wrong hands, they can be deadly. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the animated series. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY for $5 off your order today. Breakfast? Who's got time for it? Not me, not my wife, not my friend Joe, not his kids, not my next door neighbor Billy Williams, not his next door neighbor until now. Magic Spoon is a great option for a quick and healthy breakfast for me or for you and your kids during those hectic school mornings. It's a good feeling knowing that you can give your kids something that has the nutrients and protein they need to start their day without loading them up with sugar. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. Also, only 140 calories. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low carb. Time is a valuable thing. As you get back into the swing of things for the school year, everyone's different schedules, the time Time you have together is even more valuable. It's worth taking a few minutes now to save you a few minutes later. Build your own variety pack from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, maple waffle, plus other awesome flavors. You can add the cookies and cream and cocoa peanut butter flavor cereal bars to your variety box. And don't forget, Magic Spoon ships to Canada and the UK. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Use my code TOYGALAXY for $5 off your delicious and healthy Magic Spoon cereal. Go to magicspoon.com slash toygalaxy to save $5 today. Thanks again to Magic Spoon. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is a 21-episode animated series that originally aired on Fox Kids in the U.S. from 1990 to 1991. Based on the cult movie series of the same name, it owes more to Fozzie Bear than it does to stars John Astin and George Clooney. Five years after the Great Tomato War, under federal law, tomatoes have been banned. It is illegal to eat, own, transport, or sell tomatoes. No marinara sauce, no tomato soup, no bruschetta. It's up to all of us to do our part, to make sure that we never forget the way that the giant mutant tomatoes raged across the land, hybrid horrors wreaking havoc and lowering property values. Because the one man responsible for the existence of the killer tomatoes in the first place, Dr. Putrid T. Gangrene, isn't about to accept defeat. Not when his ultimate goal is total dominance of not just the city of San Zucchini, but all of planet Earth. Ready to try again with new and improved tomatoes, the only thing that can stop him is one of his most successful creations. A girl named Tara who is, in reality, a tomato herself, able to take on human form. She knows gangrene's secrets and how to stop him. Along with her fuzzy tomato dog FT and her friend Chad Finletter, they'll fight back against Dr. Gangrene at every turn. For the alternative would be to surrender the world to the whims of an angry genius and the horrible fruits of his labor. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the animated series, is part of the Killer Tomatoes franchise that began with the movie Attack of the Killer Tomatoes in 1978, written by John DeBello, Costa Dillon, and J. Stephen Peace, directed by John DeBello. On the surface, it was a movie about killer tomatoes of various sizes and potency attacking. They were the result of a government-sponsored scientific experiment that got very out of hand. Bigger, healthier tomatoes, but at what cost? These tomatoes can literally kill people. They can smother you. They can choke you. You can die from eating or drinking anything made from them. Knowing about them, seeing them in person can drive you mad. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes was a parody of everything going on in the late 1970s. From politics to media to the increasing influence of advertising on the production and consumption of entertainment. Specifically, it was a parody of B-horror movies and a proof of concept to see just how silly an idea could be for three people straight out of college to produce. Co-writer Costa Dillon says he came up with the title of the movie after seeing the 1963 film Attack of the Mushroom People. As he put it in a 2013 interview on BonAppetit.com, quote, I remember thinking, how dumb is this? And suddenly got the idea that we could do something even sillier. I don't know why tomatoes came to mind first, maybe because they seemed so innocuous. To which co-writer and director John DeBello added, quote, The idea was that Killer Tomatoes was about the stupidest thing you could come up with. It's probably one of the few films that came into existence because of a title. 
Made for about $100,000, a lot of that out of the creator's own pockets, it did just over $500,000. A victory for a tiny independent self-distributed film in the era of movies like 1975's Jaws, 1976's Rocky, and 1977's Star Wars. And for nearly a decade, that's all it was. A plucky independent film born during the rise of self-aware parody like Blazing Saddles, Airplane, and the rise of Saturday Night Live. A cult film for both horror and comedy fans. But then things got weird. In September of 1986, an episode of Muppet Babies called The Weirdo Zone focused on each character in the nursery trying to get into Gonzo's headspace. See the world the way he sees it. Find the weirdness within themselves. Fozzie imagined a world drawn from his own worst fears, a world where silly tomatoes have begun to attack the city looking for lousy comedians. Fozzie is all too aware of the danger tomatoes represent as immediate crowdsourced performance assessment. Each of the Muppet Babies stories are intercut with live action footage to better illustrate that these things are happening in their imagination. When Fozzie tells his joke, he's immediately attacked by silly tomatoes. The live action footage lifted directly from the 1978 film, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Various shots from the Great Tomato War are used to tell the exact same visual story, including the explosive encounter against the military forces in the town center. Intense action for a cartoon about baby Muppets. Turned out that episode was one of the most popular episodes of the series to that point, enough to make the producers begin to question why and what can we do with this information now that we know. Muppet Babies was produced by Marvel Productions, the television and movie production wing of Marvel Comics. They had unique insight into the entertainment needs of younger viewers, having been responsible for shows like Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, G.I. Joe, Transformers, and lots of others. The same year that episode of Muppet Babies aired, Marvel Productions was purchased by New World Pictures, the company that brought you movies like 1978's Star Crash, 1980's Battle Beyond the Stars, and 1986's Vamp. In 1986, New World also produced a movie called Happy Hour, written by John DeBello, Costa Dillon, and J. Stephen Peace, directed by John DeBello, the team that made 1978's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. With the Muppet Babies data in hand, New World asked Peace, Dillon, and DeBello if they would be interested in making a sequel to their 1978 film, to which they declined. To which New World clarified that New World would pay them to do it, to which they accepted. That film was 1988's Return of the Killer Tomatoes. It featured John Astin as the new series villain, Dr. Gangrene, creator of the eponymous Killer Tomatoes, a young George Clooney as ladies' man Matt, and Anthony Stark as Chad Finletter, nephew to great tomato war hero from the first movie, Wilbur Finletter. It also changed the status quo for the franchise. Dr. Gangrene's new plan centered on tomatoes that could be changed into human form. Results vary from super soldiers to protect Gangrene's compound to the Pope, Don Johnson, or a beautiful young woman named Tara, depending on the type of music played during the incubation process. She hooks up with Chad and his roommate Matt to expose the dangerous experiments Dr. Gangrene is conducting in his continued effort to build an army and take over the world. Return of the Killer Tomatoes rated PG made roughly $5 million, more than enough to please New World Pictures, inspiring them to think even more directly about ways to exploit the franchise among younger viewers. Saturday, Fox Kids is transforming your morning. Like it? It's a comedy invasion. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Oh, what gnarly tourists. Then, Bunny! with ghoulish gags galore on Casper. All for fun and fun for all. Catch a kooky spooky hour with Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Then Casper, Saturday morning after Zeo Rangers on Fox Kids. DeBello, Dylan, and Peace helped complete the Silly Tomato Circle. They acted as consultants with New World and Marvel Productions to begin production on an Attack of the Killer Tomatoes animated series adapted from the events of Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Core characters like Dr. Gangrene, Tara, F.T., Chad, and Wilbur Finletter were modified to fit the world of the animated series set five years after the first movie, but still in keeping with the Tomatoes to Humans concept. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes premiered Saturday, September 8th, 1990 on the Fox Children's Network. Thirteen episodes for season one ran through Saturday December 29th, 1990. A second season followed beginning in September of 1991. However, it only ran eight episodes before being canceled. The final episode aired Saturday, November 23rd, 1991. And now it's time to sing along with the attack of the killer tomatoes. <laughs> The Attack of the Killer Tomatoes theme song was composed by cartoon music legends Saban and Shuki Levy. It was an updated composition of the original theme song written by writer and director John DeBello. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes brought John Astin back as Dr. Gangrene. All of the other roles were recast. Christian Guzak as Chad Finletter, Kath Susie as Tara. 
Neil Ross as newscaster Whitley White, Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson voicing multiple roles like Tomato Guy, Zoltan, Ketchup, Mumado, Fantomato, Link, Johnny Tomato, Beefsteak was played by Chuck McCann, Tamacho was played by Cam Clark, Fang was played by Susan Silo. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes did not last long. Cancelled after only 21 episodes, not even two full seasons, multiple contributing factors, not the least of which was a drastic change in animation style. Acom Productions was responsible for season one, one of the most prominent animation studios in the world. They made some of the most important animated series of all time. Gem and the Holograms, Muppet Babies, The Transformers, X-Men the Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, and Rude Dog and the Dweebs. Season two, however, was animated by American Film Technologies, a film colorization company founded in the 1930s. In an attempt to expand their business, American Film Technologies had begun dabbling in animation. Their only release prior to Attack of the Killer Tomatoes season two was a single 22 minute pilot for Mattel's Computer Warriors in 1990. Season two also made a push to embrace computer generated imagery, one of the first animated series to do so, but also creating a stark visual disconnect with the look and feel of season one. Instead of self-contained episodes, season two attempted to tell an ongoing story with increasing stakes and character development. In keeping with the movie series that reinvented the mythology as needed to keep the world fresh and ripe, season two made changes to characters to suit the new story. However, some of those changes to the core functionality of the Tomatoverse were jarring to longtime fans of the series. Terra, whose Human Tomato or Humanado transformation was triggered by music in Return of the Killer Tomatoes, was updated to being triggered by salt in season one of the animated series. Season two gave Terra the ability to change from human to tomato, from tomato to human, at will. Not to mention the fact that the general public was now aware of her existence as a tomato human, a tohumanto, and she was free to be a talking tomato when she wanted to. At which point, a lot of viewers recognized that the creators weren't taking it seriously anymore and checked out of the franchise. Perhaps the new Toxic Crusaders program everyone was talking about would treat its fans with the respect they deserved. <laughs> Attack of the Killer Tomatoes was supported by a line of toys produced by Mattel, a basic two-pack series that came with a killer tomato and a non-posable human figurine. Tara with Missing Link, Dr. Gangreen with Ketchup, Igor with Fangmato, Chad with Tamacho. There was also a series of ripcord-powered Zipamatoes like Mamato Zipamato and Zoltan Zipamato. And, of course, no collection would be complete without water play with toys like Beefsteak Squirtamato. You say Squirtamato or Squirtamato? <laughs> Other licensed tomato merch included lunch boxes, pencil toppers, PVC figures, activity books. There was a kid's Halloween costume. Applause released a series of eight inch collectible figures for Dr. Gangrene, Chad, and Tara, as well as a plush replica of FT, just like the one seen at the end of the movie, Return of the Killer Tomatoes. The first Attack of the Killer Tomatoes video game was a PC game released in 1986 based on the 1978 movie. The first game tied to the animated series was the 1991 game for the Nintendo Entertainment System developed by Imagineering. A side-scrolling platform jump in which the player controls Chad Finlander attempting to stop Dr. Gangrene and his gang of five from releasing the Doomsday Tomato and destroying San Zucchini. A completely different game was released for the Game Boy in 1992. There has been no official release of the 21 episodes of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes on any home media that our crack research team could find, nor is it officially streaming anywhere. However, there are many complete episodes available unofficially at places like YouTube. Despite the cancellation of the animated series, the Tomato franchise produced two more movies, 1991's Killer Tomatoes Strike Back and 1992's Killer Tomatoes Eat France, both released straight to home video. Everything old is new again, and the 90s are the hot decade in pop culture right now. As such, in 2018, Atomic Toy Box announced that they were working on a reboot of the original 1978 Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. A year later, according to a Facebook post by director Dustin Ferguson, shooting had officially begun. As of this video, the reboot does not appear on his IMDb. MDB page, nor has it been mentioned in any other source that we can find. But the website KillerTomatoes.com is still up with a shop where you can buy official hats and shirts. There's a link to watch the original 1978 movie on YouTube and an entry form to enter to win a chance to be in the reboot. Hurry! Participants will be selected by October 31st, 2018. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the animated series, proved that it could occupy the same pop culture space as Transformers, Batman, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, at least temporarily. With fourth wall breaking, non sequitur humor connecting with fans around the same time Deadpool was making his comic book debut. That thing's gonna last to the end. I think it's, I, just, I can't get it off now. Yeah, I think you might wanna pull it off and then stick it back on. <laughs> <laughs>
Part horror, part comedy, all parody. It's a franchise that appeals to two very specific demographics, young children and people who get the joke. Or at the very least, people who understand that cartoons and movies don't have to be high concept to be entertaining, to be good. It's for people who know entertainment doesn't have to be serious to be insightful. It doesn't have to be smart to be funny. It's for people who recognize the futility of making fun of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes because you can't do it better than it does to itself. This is the worst one for hairs up my nose. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, if you would like early access to the videos ad-free, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy and let us know in the comments down below if you've seen any of the Killer Tomato franchise. Two things, one, I had never watched any of the movies or the animated series before working on this video and I can honestly say that I legitimately enjoyed Return of the Killer Tomatoes. I would put it right up there with Blazing Saddles and Airplane, ranked three out of three, but still worth a watch if you like the other two. And second thing, I can finally spell tomatoes correctly without getting bagged by spell check. I had to type it so many times for this video. Did you know there's a silent E in there? In tomatoes, yes. Not, not many people know that. <laughs> but.